Welcome back everyone to the end of New Beginning Mod, which I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover. And right now, we're taking a look at our population, but first, let's talk about some of these events. International Background The Polish Revolt hasn't gone unnoticed, and many European countries are already discussing about the topic. French liberals and socialists are collecting contributions for the uprising. The London Democrats organize a sea expedition to help our Polish insurgents. The governments in these countries are too costly, or are too mostly in support of the Polish. Let's hope this won't have any bad repercussions for us, and this Russian civilian economy is booming. Our peacetime economy is working like a well-oiled machine, and we are making profits on every end. It seems focusing on peaceful industry, industrial buildup has paid off for us. Great minor economic boom. Awesome. Uh, but it's weird, because it says we have 113 million people. It doesn't seem like it, though. Maybe I'm wrong, but 27 million Orthodox people, 6 million Catholics, 1.74 million Protestants, 1.5 million Jews, a uh, quarter million Sunni Muslims, 30,000 shamanists, but... I have a feeling, I'm not very great at math, but that doesn't really add up to 113 million. I mean, maybe there's a lot of atheists here, maybe. Um, but, yeah, 24 plus 5 is 29, let's say 31, 31, 33. Yeah, we're, we're looking at about a third of the population here, so I'm not sure where the population went. But we do have, like, the culture stuff, 14 million for Ukrainian, um, actually, Belarusian. Polish, Malorossi, Velkorossi. Uh, I guess, technically, do we not? Ooh, Comey. Um, there's no... Are these considered Russians? Malo, these little, little Russians? I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't know Russian at all. I'm not Russian probably at all. But anyways, so we just finished up the focus regarding... Um, what did we just do? I can't remember now. Oh, protecting Crimea. That's just a really good thing to do. Let's go ahead and end censorship. Is that a good thing to do? I guess so. We could use the extra research piece. So let time come on. We got quite a few comments to go through, and especially regarding reforms. And we're still losing manpower because we're demobilizing. But we're almost done demobilizing, which is not looking good for us. But hey, whatever. We got enough investment involved in uh, Central Asia, which is totally fine. Uh, anything else here? Oh, the Suez Canal is almost done. Send support to Britain. No, thank you. Since they helped out the Japanese from us, you know, doing what we wanted to do. Military actions fortify Sevastopol. We could do that now. Crimea, Crimea, Crimea. Oh, I think if we could wait maybe just a little bit. I want to save our civ civilian factories, but apparently someone said that our air currently, because we're being led by uh, Alexander II, our air would be Alexander III, which is not a bad person to get. But like I said yesterday, or in the last video, I really wish that uh, we could see who our air is, but notes from France, Britain, and Austria. Oh boy. Vapor compression stuff. The Western Powers, Western Powers, oh, might be quite upset about this. All right, so we'll read that as soon as we get the next, next one done. Thank you. We received protest notes from Britain, France, Austria, and other minor countries. French Emperor Napoleon III demanded that we restore the constitutional status of the Kingdom of Poland. From 1815, and others demand that we break the Alsleben Convention. While ignoring French demands probably wouldn't do anything bad, it would be a quick way to end the uprising. Though, if we were to ignore the demands about the Alvin's Leben Convention, we might face some kind of coalition forming against us. Return to the 1815 status. Break the convention. Keep the convention. Ooh. The Western powers may be quite upset about this. I don't really care. Um, now, hmm. I don't know what those guys are going to do. It doesn't sound like the J Prussians want to do anything against us, so, yeah. If that's the case, I'm going to throw you back over here. I'm actually going to throw you guys off of Finland, since they're our buddies for now. You two. You two dudes. And you guys are just hanging out over here. Um, maybe move them a little closer to Europe, just in case. I'm not sure what, what the convention actually was about in real life. So, there you go. Let's go do that. And, you know what, let me look up historically what happened with this convention. Alright, so this convention here, it was never actually instituted apparently in real life, so that's okay to go ahead and break it, since they don't really care. And actually, it was a convention between us and Prussia, the Kingdom of Prussia, so I didn't know about that. Even though it would have been fun to beat up the Austro-Hungarians, or just, I guess just the Austrian Empire, but that would probably ruin a lot of things, seeing as the Austrian Empire needs to exist for them to be beaten by the Prussians, so yeah. I hope the supply isn't too bad, but now that the Pr Austrians have shown their hand... I don't like the Austrians very much, but a couple comments. So, like I said earlier, the heir might be Alexander III. Uh, Russia actually did back down during the Tsushima crisis, just because it, 
I know... What was it? Genghis Khan wanted Tsushima, or the Mongols wanted Tsushima, but it's so far away. We don't even have this stuff, like I said yesterday. Uh, someone recommends we begin secularization, but... And uh, integrate Poland and Finland, and push for human, more human rights, remove child labor, which... <sighs> Do we really need to remove child labor? I know it hurts the research speed quite a bit, but that... But, the, you know, construction speed, man, construction speed. Uh, someone recommends we increase health care, and... Because we have no health care, as we saw yesterday. We already have law and order, which... Uh, or no, we have a police force. Uh, military... Military police force. What is it? Is this... Benefits? Uh, it's okay. Legislative power game. Police force. Um, that's, I think that's okay for now. And remove discriminatory laws. But what if we like to discriminate? Look at this. Neo-Kantianism? Nice. Uh, what do we want? Oh, we got this guy's a minister now. That's from he's the Ukrainian guy. Mm, we must have lost somebody here or something. Stability, research speed, Kowalski, PP. We already have enough PP for now, realistically. Uh, stability would be nice, but we already have maxed out. So, I guess more research speed. It's not much, but get 3%, I suppose. Uh, more construction speed, yes, please. Other comments include mobilizing the economy for war will cancel itself, apparently. So. I think we discovered that when I tried to go from civilian economy to like partial mobilization or something. It didn't work out really great for us in the end, but it is what it is. And we should decrease radical political ideologies since we do have like, what is that, 3% chauvinist populism, a 6% traditional conservatists, we have 1% collective socialists, which is going up, as well as vanguard communists and a little bit of centrists. So uh, I think technically we already have the extremist parties banned. We don't have open politics, but we, we've banned extremist parties so far, so. And someone recommends we reform education. Where is education? Demographic internal laws. Edu education, as well as research funding. And get rid of state religion. You know, that does hurt our research speed, but you get more stability. Mm. You can go with a secular state. Mm. You get 4% more research speed. You lose some political power. Uh, but what if we like discrimination? <laughs> well, let's see first... The biggest reason why I don't want to change things too much is because we lose consumer goods factories, and yet research speed is important, 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 important. But I really don't want to lose any more consumer goods. We've already lost quite a few, and we'll, which I'm we'll get to eventually. But still, all right. So let's see. Abolish inhumane punishment. What? What? Artillery, fortifications, armories, military industry. Yeah, I think we might want to go down this way. Focus on defense might not be bad. On offense, I kind of like offense, though. Model European Army would be pretty nice. Yeah, I wouldn't get rid of that spirit. Ooh, but, ooh, let's do improved logistic systems. Logistics were always a struggle in Russia, which we'll, we will solve this problem by copying the logistics of France, Britain, and other countries. Very nice. Hopefully we don't get too many more events, especially if I do things off-screen. But if we have to. Oh, oh no, the minor economic boom went away. Dominican Republic has declared bankruptcy. Oh, oh, and before we forget, how's America doing? Well... The Union has done great, splurging into Texas, but the CSA has done tremendous in almost securing all of Missouri. They got encircled all up in Michigan. Uh, let's see, is that Indianapolis is under fire. Half of Ohio has already gone under, but the Union is coming back. Never discount the Union. It is only 63, so we're caught up in infantry stuff for now, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> Horse lumber, uh, let's grab some more soft attack and stuff for that. Washington, D.C. has fallen. They've spread out into Pennsylvania more, but they're encircled. Well, they do have a port over there, but then again, the Confederate Navy is probably not super strong. This is not very good for anybody. This could be anyone's war still. Like, if the Confederates just went over here through Oklahoma, they could probably still win. Uh, they linked up through the garrison in Washington. They could still do well. They just linked up in Ohio again. <clears throat> Indianapolis has fallen. They're just marching straight through Illinois. They took Peoria, Springfield. Oh, they got cut off here, though. Oh, that's not good. That is really not good. Oh, then Sukman was made down there too. And crushed. And I do have a cup of coffee here to give us nice and, uh. No, no, satisfied. Sa nice and satisfied. Oh, that's not good for the Confederates. Oh, they lost Indianapolis. Man, this is. This is a much more bloody civil war, at least from what it looks like, ge geographic wise. Oh, they're probably going to lose these in Sukman's. Yeah. I'm going to place my money on. I don't know. I mean, the CSA, they're still branching out. How many divisions do they have? They have no manpower. The U.S. has no manpower. Oh, boy. They have up to 44 divisions. They have up to four. It's almost exactly equal still. I can't tell who's going to win. Uh, they are coming back. They just made more encirclements. They got encircled here and destroyed and up here and destroyed. And over here probably getting destroyed. But they're coming back to Texas probably. Cottage Industries, nice. 
I guess we get more monthly manpower or stuff like that, so. I. Wait. Dominican Republic. Wait, Spain, when did you get here? What the heck? Huh. Okay. A lot of divisions. I need to play Spain sometimes, so. But we'll see what happens. So apparently, someone said we could change our national identity too. I'm not sure how we can do that. Seeing as. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what we can do about that, realistically. But, oh, they said a white piece. Uh, basic human rights. Do they want human rights constitutionally adopted? Stability. Oh, actually, that's not bad. Limited constitution. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. Oh, we can get a Sharia constitution. A Sharia constitution in Russia? Doesn't sound too bad. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, this civil war is just crazy. I know Indiana barely had only like one battle, a small, minor battle in the civil war, but like this is much more devastating. Holy crap. This is not good for over here. They're doing better over here now, but a lot worse over there. Uh, let's see. Max factories in the state. Cool, why not? Uh, let's go and do one of these things. Alright. Because we are monarchy and we can do whatever we want here, what shall we do? We shall... Maximum... Wait, I thought I... Yeah, we went to eight work hours work day. That's good. Child labor. Uh, you know what? The children can go to work. And be forced to go to school. Man, we're making the children work a lot. <laughs> That's right. You get a schooling, you get an education, and you get to pay, get paid. Even though you get, you lose a lot of things, but whatever. Oh, military prowess. Look at that. You get more base war support. You get ten percent more political stability. I don't think this is worth it, but we'll try it anyways. Wait. It said it cost seventy-five army XP. We didn't lose any army XP, but okay. I'll take that. Why not? Oh, it's 99% really dumb. Improved logistic system. Thank you very much. City of Prussia's Army's Organization. Prussia, the army with the state, has an excellent army structure and organization. We'll implement some of their ideas in our own forces. Cool. And more land doctrine research speed, which I've completely ignored so far. So, And it's almost 64. So eventually we're going to do the Treaty of Tarbagatai. Infrastructure development. One of our wealthy aristocrats has funded a project to <clears throat> expand the local infrastructure in one of our states. Since our country is in... Phase of rapid industrialization, we were able to realize his plans with a bit of additional funding quite quickly. Superb. And the 50th anniversary ceremony of the Battle of Nations at Leipzig. It's been 50 years since the combined armies of Russia, Sweden, and many other German countries handed Napoleon Bonaparte a decisive defeat south of Leipzig in a battle that was the largest Europe had ever seen. Not only was the so-called Battle of Nations a major milestone in Napoleon's demise, it also fueled the hopes for a German nation-state and, for the first time, made this distant dream seem like a real possibility. Let's commemorate and remember the fallen soldiers. Great! We could actually use more war sports still. Oh, good. That sewage system? What? People want sewage systems? What are you talking about? Because the Far East is probably really bad. I'm just going to have you guys come over here then. Good luck. How are we not done dealing... The Type B Rebellion might actually win. I mean, they're looking strong. They're looking better better every single time we see them, so... Uh, Yvonne, you probably have nothing here. That's fine. Whatever. All right, yeah, the Union is definitely doing well. They're going to get DC back. Yeah, the Union is probably still going to win. Even though once these guys die, once these guys die, once these guys die. Yeah, the Union is probably going to win this one. But it's still 6-3. I mean, you never know. You just never know what's going to happen. All right, so we got that done. I, uh, do we really want to secularize? I really don't want to secularize. I'm not orthodox at all, but I think I kind of like it. I kind of like it like this. We become a secular nation. To accept all religions, we would attempt to secularize our country, even though it would be extremely costly and take a long, long time. We lose stability, political power, stability, for 10 years. How about this one? Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess it's for the march forward. Go and do that. Why not? Give us something to do here. And maybe we'll read another focus. If there's not too many other events, that'd be good. I just kind of want to see what happens to the Americans. Because... Oh, that'd be kind of cool if... Oh, there's... This was oh, nice. We get five... Okay, so we invest a little bit. We got five prestige. Not bad. That'd be cool if the Confederates could take uh, Chicago. That'd be kind of wild. Oh, they still got... So go down here as well. Oh, wow. Oh, the Confederates are going to... Doing back... Uh, doing okay now over here. International Red Cross is formed. Your Highness, the weaklings of Europe have signed a foolish agreement protecting the soldiers on the battlefield and constricting us to certain rights. While we were at the meeting, we did not sign the charter because a battle is a battle, and soldiers are soldiers that we either have to live or die on the battlefield. Maybe if the other European sovereign states treat us more fairly, we will treat their soldiers with more silly rules when we conquer them all. That is the news I have for you right now, Your Highness. Interesting. Uh, we want to come down here, right? Uh, as much as I want to do mounted infantry, 
Um, we want to get down here for even less of black consumption. Terrain adaptability would be really, really, really good to get. So we're still doing okay. We're still trying to build, 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 build. Man, industrializing is not easy in this mod. Oh my goodness. Bro, it's a treaty on Kazakh border. We're super close to getting that one. Uh, we're still lacking a lot of equipment though, which is not very good. We need, we just need more factories, man. But I think it's time for us to do another one of these. Border wars, trade laws, tax rates, land prosperity, courts, freedom of the press, education. We already did that one, it's called compulsory education. Religion. Um, let's see. Suffrage. Border laws, tax rates, child labor. Do I really want to go with illegal? It hurts our construction speed and stuff. Hmm. Court, trade unions, freedom of assembly. We're on restricted attendance. There you go. That's not bad. What is it? Discriminatory laws? We are on limited we're on limited equality already. We could do segregation. Um Yeah, I'll do that one, why not? Cool. Occupation of Holstein? Abolish inhumane punishment. We are civilized, a modern country. Inhumane punishment has no place in Russia. Cool. So off screen, I'm probably gonna go ahead and maybe do a few more of these. I'll let you know if I do any of them. We'll probably actually we'll probably get healthcare. That's probably the big one. We'll probably go try to get excellent healthcare as fast as possible. Additionally, I'll build more factories. Plus, we need food focuses so that you know I'm doing off screen the rules of war. We're a modern nation. We must study the rules of war. We wish to be recognized as civilized. Cool. The new standard rifle. By standardizing the rifle used by our soldiers, will make it easier to maintain our army. Develop siege guns. Siege guns are incredibly important in modern warfare. We should therefore develop them. We'll probably do the Brest Litovsk Fortress. A fortress in Eastern Europe is vowed to defend off attacks from Prussian rebels. Build armories. Armories are incredibly important as they keep lots of weapons and ammo secure. Or areas in, in a secure state. So now that we've got this, and I do want to do this up first before we kind of cut ourselves short. Great game. Four. D. Oh. We just get them and get cores. I love it. Oh, wait, I thought we were supposed to get cores on this stuff. All the speech. What is to be done? The book. What is to be done? By a radical writer, Nikola Chinyeshki, was smuggled out of the great fortress of Saint Peter and Paul, where he is currently in prison. The novel talks about some absolutely outlandish ideas, like the idea of collective farms owned by the peasants, as if we would allow something like this to ever happen. Don't worry, Your Highness. We'll make sure to suppress these revolutionary ideas before they spread to all the peasants. We should also deal with Chinyeshki. It's quickly becoming a nuisance. Burn it. Okay, well, that's okay. Oh, and look, now it's awkward. I love it. And great game. Take Taraz. Oh. Okay, then. Supplies are probably extremely bad down here. Um, they don't they have two divisions. We'll do this one first, and then we'll keep going. Re oh, there we go. Reopen textile mill. Nice. How much cotton do we have? Do we need more? We can always import more if we need it. Or create it ourselves. Yeah, we could, we could probably make more cotton. I'm just focused on civvies for now so much. Actually, how many civvies do we have? Up to three. That's not bad. I'm going to do that. And no opposition left. Great. Well, it uses four. Does anything use two? It will use two at once. We'll do this slowly. And three. We could hold another world pair, but no thank you. Two. We don't need to see that probably ever again, probably. Yeah. One. Take Taraz. Start board. Oh, and that happened in 20 days. Which is fine. No supply issues. Yeah, but they do have... A one to two, that's not too bad. We have like 10 for each one of our guys, so that's okay with us. 15 to two, not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, that's just we're here. Who needs industry when you have excellent healthcare? <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, we went from no healthcare to a pretty darn good healthcare. That's... That's a pretty radical step to take. Usually you want to in increase, you know, social reforms little by little, but this was a bit extreme. We already lost 16% consumer goods. Got more legislative power game. We lost legislative power. Even though we got some, monthly population goes up by 41%. Oh, that definitely hurt us. That might have been a bit too much, but... The Pavel Military School was opened in St. Petersburg today. It is named after Pavel I, the late Tsar. It is staffed with some of the greatest military minds, and we expect great things from a school. Great! Please let us... Get this one done as fast as possible so we stop losing attrition. Or stop taking attrition, really. Alright, it looks like we're winning. Are you winning, son? Sewage systems. Follow it up with... 
Probably more gun stuff just in case. There you go. More defense, breakthrough, soft attack. That's good stuff. Pasteurization. It is only 64, so we're done with all this stuff for now, which is nice. Uh, let's come over to electronics and instruments, maybe? Cap. Oh, consumer goods factories, yes. Early alternators, yes, please. How are we doing down here? Oh, uh, we're still winning. We love to win, right? If you're not winning, are you having fun? You might be. And are we done demobilizing? Thank goodness. Imagine if we could take this little area for, between the Raj and Afghanistan. That'd be kind of, that'd be kind of really wild. Um, prove... Okay, we'll do this again. Just because we can. I mean, there's... We lose some... We don't even lose command power. Wow, look, look at that. Alright, not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, and... Uh, the Prussia is killing it. My friend said did markings one point. Oh wow, look at this. This is really worse. With Confederates. At this point, they've been pushed back from the Midwest and the you know the rest of the north. Wow. Tosh Kent War dot five dot T. Okay, great. I think we won. Look at that, beautiful. You guys head on back over there, and you get your general back. And Edward, very nice. Abolish inhumane punishment. The rules of war. Yes, we must be recognized if we're civilian. If there's nothing else. And I'm going to do a few more focuses off screen. All right, so it's about September 29th, 1864, and right now we can we have the Geneva Convention. Your Highness, the weaklings of Europe have signed yet another foolish agreement protecting the soldiers on the battlefield and constricting us to certain rights. While we were at the meeting, we did not sign the charter because a battle is a battle, and soldiers are soldiers that will either live or die on the battlefield. Uh, I guess we already read this one. Maybe if the other European sovereign states treat us more fairly, we will treat their soldiers with their silly rules and we conquer them all. That is all the news I have for you right now. Your Highness, sign... Do we really want the Geneva Convention? Don't attend. <clears throat> I like to not sign it, but just go and sign it, whatever. And I've already done build armories and a new standard rifle. Oh, we can do this one, maybe. It's only 35 days. Prebaltica. The Baltics are gate between Europe and Russia for centuries. We must decide on a strategy for this region. Cool. Minor spendings. Yeah, we have some minor spendings. Off screen, I don't think I've done too much else here, but it looks like the... As you will see. <clears throat> oh, we have 25 air XP. Look at that. Oh, the Maritime Treaty... Okay, cool. Uh, the Confederates are losing because they're losing a lot of manpower, even though they already took over half of California, which is kind of absolutely wild and crazy. Uh, let's see. They have a lot of manpower, but the Confederates... Oh, they actually have a little bit of manpower left. Look at that. They must be mobilizing more because when I saw them, they didn't have they weren't mobilizing that much at all. So so I think the Union is probably definitely going to win here from here on out, but you never know. But I think the Union is going to still win. But we did get the Snyder Enfield Rifle because of one of our focuses. We got that a little bit ahead of time, which is nice. We did turn in adaptability for less better supply consumption. Um, that's way too ahead of time. Over here, more cavalry recon. We're not using a lot of cavalry. Uh, actually, you guys. Ooh, supply shoes. <sighs> okay, goodbye. Well, that should up out a little bit, right? 4.6, 4.9. God dang it. I hate supply shoes so much. There you go. Go up there. But we're still just trying to build things. Consumer goods obviously aren't very good, even though we got a way more population growth, which is kind of nice. We only get 2,800 every month. But we'll see what about this stuff. So it was recommended that we should go with... Uh, oh, Premier International. Okay, interesting. Um, but do promote the Lithuanian National Revival. The Lithuanian new nation is one with history and one that many still remember. We need to support renewal. So, okay, the state's population becomes slightly more rebellious in certain areas. Uh, but there is repressed Lithuanian culture. Lithuanian culture is a threat to our authority in Eastern Europe. We must act against it. Support the Baltic National Awakening. We'll support a nationalist movement in the Baltic states. Suppress the German elite. We will su or support the German elite. We'll support the German elite trying to draw the Baltics closer to Germany. I'm not sure why we want to do that one for Germany, so... We'll promote the Lithuanian National Revival. So, yeah, we'll try that one. And yeah, actually, that's not too bad. Those regions will no longer be cores of Poland. Was it this Suwalki? Wait, which areas will that be? And I, I want to wait till we get to 65 so we can just start doing some more border wars. Oh. And also, also we did get, like, the Moscow Zoo opened. We got a book as well. But when Siberian students named Grigory Potanin, Nikolai Andretsev, Serafim Shashkov, Nikolai Nayumov, Fyodor Usov and others came to St. Petersburg in the early 60s. They immediately came up with an idea of Siberian independence, or at least autonomy for the region. They returned home in 1863, immediately establishing contact with political prisoners and exiled Poles. They were gathering forces and money to incite revolt in Siberia, but at this summer, in the years 1865, their plot was uncovered. Forty-four members of the group were arrested and taken to prison by the Russian government in May, after which officers of the Siberian Cadet Corps searched... Uh, 
Cadet Arseny Samsonov, Sam age 16, for illicit items and final proclamation entitled to the Patriots of Siberia, attributed to a collective authorship of G. Potanin and Yadrinstev, and other leaders of the movement. Now, all of them want to went to various places around the empire, ensuring that they, we won't hear of them revolting again. Their ideas got some foothold within local minds of local bourgeois, of the local bourgeois, but that doesn't matter, because no one questions Russian authority in this land anymore. Good thing that they were arrested. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, we have even more tensions. How great. <clears throat> Prove military prowess? Sure, why not? We don't even lose anything. So, okay, not bad. And we still have only 12 factories, which kind of sucks. But wait, which which one of these areas? Let's see. Okay, so it is Siali, Kaunas, and Marjapoli, whatever it is. Oh, there goes one rebellion. So this one on... Oh, that's not a Polish core. This is not a Polish core either. Um, Kaunas, that, that was good. So that'll be removed. That'll be nice. This doesn't already have a Polish core. No, that's Latvian. Vilno? Is it? Was it? I don't think it was Vilno. Yeah. So it's Kaunas, this area, as well as... That help, I think this one too. That's good. Remove the poles, please. There's not that many poles here either. Over here, how many poles do we got? Uh, not that many. 57,000, about 13% of the population. And 11%, nice, not bad. Cool, 12%, almost done. And the Confederates are slowly losing. Yeah, they're desperately trying to hold on. Oh, half of, let's uh, say two-fifths of Arkansas has already fallen under. But it is what it is. A Siberian military district established. Today is a great day for Imperial Russian military. Out with the old and in with the new, I say. We've established the Siberian military district, the last of the ten planned military districts. Now, while well, this one's far from a great city, Moscow. <clears throat> oh, uh, let's see. And away from the heartland of Russia, it is just as important as any other and will be treated as such. We've elected a superb commander to lead the district and he'll be revitalizing everything from our military defenses to improving the new port of Vladivostok. Dmitry Milutin. Bandits will never will fear bandits will fear our might. Um where are we supposed to get this group here? I mean, it's almost 1865, so I want to do the thing off screen or on screen with you guys with begin the siege of Tashkent, but we'll see. Early incandescent light bulbs. Not bad. Recon. Mm, that'd be nice. That's all way too ahead of time. Oh, I'll grab early dynamo generators because we can. And uh how can we advance the machine era? Has to be after 1880, which is going to take a while. Petrol engine. Or 1890. Wow. We need to get a lot of things done. And when this gets Siege of Tashkent. Which we can do in a, literally in a few days. 21 days for nitroglycerin. That'd be good. And we get more soft attack, which would be very, very nice. And nice. That's what pissed some people off, but that's okay. Sometimes that's okay to just do that. Ooh, 4% for the RSDRP. Oh boy, are we actually losing this every day? Hopefully not. Ah, happy new year, everyone. Let's do the siege. And throw all you guys back down here. Even supplies are god awful. It is what it is. And we're out of horse cavalry stuff and infantry equipment, but whatever. And, not bad. In a few days, oh, after this one. I guess we can support the Balts National Awakening as well. So we can make everyone more compliant, so. Oh, Schleiber's factory. In 1852, Schleiber and his partner Julius Schwartz bought a, pl lent a plot at Lutz and started building a machinery factory. In October 1854, Schwartz, Schwartz sold his share to the Schleiber for 10,000 rubles, making him the sole owner of the factory in 55. Schleiber found a spinning mill of 34 frames and a steam engine of 40 house horsepower. In 1857, Sch Scheibler employed 180 laborers and earned a turnover of 305,100 rubles in 1860. Scheibler made large profits after con prices in Europe increased because of the American Civil War and sold a stock at triple the price. He became known as the King of the Continent and linen exports of lots. In 1870, uh, 1911, 1911 employees worked in his factory, which was the third largest 9.3% con producer of Poland. Excellent. Cool. Even though we probably need more con after this. Uh, I'll go and grab that one. Voltage battery, that's fine. I just want to see what can happen down here. And we've got four days left. Hopefully they just just give us their territory, because do we really want to fight a war? We might, but still. And the next one is 66. 60... Oh, we can do two of these in the same year. Nice. Proposed 1873 agreement. Okay. Oh, that's actually really good for cavalry agreement right now. More stuff attack. Siege of Tashkent. Russians incoming. And they should be getting an event in which we should begin the siege. Some more? Oh, maybe it was a failure of a siege. Maybe the siege failed. 
Oh, they do have recon on them, but... Okay, supply... Hold on, is this... Are these guys still killing each other? They are, wow. Oh, we, get, we just get a core in Tashkent. Okay, well, that's not too... That's not bad. That's not bad, we get free core, I love it. Hope you enjoyed that as well, but I guess... We'll keep seeing what's happening, and probably watch the Confederates fall. And now it's May 25th, 1865, but Crown Prince Nicholas has died. Your Highness the First, I have terrible news. As I know, for the last couple of weeks, your son, Crown Prince Nicholas, has been touring Southern Europe for a few weeks. However, he became ill and was rushed to Southern France to be cared for by the great French doctors. He has just had a cerebral spinal meningitis after his condition worsened. He has asked that his wife remarry to your new heir, Alexander III. This is, that is all, Your Highness, and I will leave you to your grief. Your entire country mourns Prince Nicholas. Which is unfortunate, but it's still 65. And the American Civil War should hopefully be finishing up soon. Let's get more research speed because that would be really good. But, I have already gone ahead and done Polish uh, The Polish Kingdom is the most industrious region of the uh, Russian Empire. Thus, we have to make sure that it stays within our borders. Which is good, and which will probably establish the Polish diet because someone did recommend we go down that way. Poland, like Finland, deserves their own parliament. Without the influence of Russian polit politicians far away in St. Petersburg. And which will also do other things such as... Oh, we can't do this one. Tighten the grip on Poland. Poland revolted before, she can revolt again. We cannot risk having Austria, Prussia, and Britain snooping into our business. Obviously, we're not going to do Russification in Poland. Russifying Poland is the only way we can make sure that they become loyal. We'll probably end Russification in Poland itself. Poland has enough unethical treatment on our behalf. We must end... Oh, look at that. If this, We must end this if we want Poland to stay loyal, and we should probably do a Vistula defense scheme. We must create a defensive battle plan to defend the east bank of the Vistula River, which would be good for us. Continue construction of the also weak fortress and reinstate the Congress Kingdom. Oh, crap. Maybe that's a bad idea, actually. Oh, uh, yeah, that's probably a really bad idea. The Kingdom of Poland will be established with Emperor Alexander II of Russia becoming the King Alexander of Poland. Um... Well, we can play as Poland if we really want to. Will they become our puppet, though? I don't want them under us. Um, okay, well, that's interesting. I don't want them liberated. Do they not become our puppet? Hopefully they become our puppet. Because if they don't become a puppet, I will just literally reinvade them if possible, so... I guess we'll see what happens. Oh, the poor Confederates. They already lost Savannah, which is still the capital for some reason, but okay. I'm uh, just going to grab this one. The Dynamo, just to get more construction speed. After antiseptics, though, what do we want? Population growth, probably? That probably is a pretty good idea. Industrial fertilizer. So we're done with this one for a long booty time until... Well, until this one, we get that one. Oh, they're the same plane, huh? Okay, well, whatever. Cool. And we, this one keeps coming back up. Let's begin the siege of Tashkent. I don't know about that they know this, but we already have Tashkent under us. So, yeah. Oh, the Confederates surrendered. Look at that. The Americans seem, seems to have sorted their matter. Well, the Confederacy broke and defeated the U.S. of A. is united once more. Cool. And now they're going to have problems until they're all dead. So, when is the KKK spawning? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool. Military Reconstruction, District Number 5, 1, 3, 2... Wait, 1. one. Why is there two 1s? Oh, there goes Lincoln. The U.S. mourns the death of a beloved martyr and the savior of the Union. Oh, boy. Oh, that by... Cool. Observers return as the American Civil War draws to a close. Our observers that we had sent are now coming back, and there's no more word to observe. All right. Rapid industrialization is gone. That sucks. Because uh, we lose construction, construction speed, but we do get more consumer goods factories back, so. Philip Sheridan. Cool. Actually, uh, they have... Okay, that's a unique focus tree. There's not much of a tree, but... <clears throat> it's a little tree. That's kind of cool. Ah, good. At least we got some more consumer goods factories back, so we can start making more stuff. The end of Paraguayan War. That was unexpectedly bloody. Yeah. Wow, this looks re really bad. Republic of Paraguay, huh? Oh, they must have lost that. Yeah, actually, they were doing pretty well against Brazil and stuff, so. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty, 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 pretty bloody. Pretty blood, bloody. So after this, I'm not sure we're actually going to hit the, uh, the reinstate the Congress of Kingdom. The question of Russification, though, would be kind of good, but. This one's another 70-day focus, but we'll see what happens. We shall see what happenerinos. Once we can take it, of course. But man. Also, I did unite all of Africa. That didn't really matter uh, together, so here's this. Yeah, I... Just try to help out with the speed a little bit. It's honestly not much of a change, at least from my opinion, just because, well... Africa, we don't really care about Africa right now. And I'd argue a lot of people still don't care about Africa, so... And the Russification of Poland, because we can. If because we can, even though I really don't want to lose factories over there. But, we'll see what happens if there's any major event next. Alright, so we've got an expedition to Coquelin.
Your Majesty, our great general Chenyanyayab, a hero in Crimea and the Caucasus, requests permission to lead an expedition of a thousand men to the barbarous Khanate of Kochlan, and take this major city from them. Let them bring glory to the Russian Empire once again. Cool. So hopefully we do okay here. It's going to probably be one heck of a bad time for us, but let's go on in and hopefully not lose too many supplies. And you know what? Force the attack. Kill these guys off. You help out too. Even though we're fighting over a river, which is really bad. Um, we're killing quite a few of them. They do have engineers and recon, but one or two battalions is not enough to save their little petty lands. In addition, we will also do, what is it? The invasion of Bukhara. We will be at peace. We'll do that one too, together. Because we can. Guys, you came back for more, huh? I mean, yeah, we're forcing attack. We've only lost 10 guys for 6,000. Defend Russia. Denmark. Sure, Denmark. We'll go with that one. Why not? Yay, Coquelin. Good, you're under us now. You're under new administration, eh? Alright, so we're going to go with this here. And then Bukhara will be ours. Opposition returns. No one really cares about the opposition, though. What went wrong? Don't ask me. I have no idea. Oh, wait. Oh, is this all big one, -o one big old line? Wait, hold on. What's going on here? And begin the invasion. Yes, please. Uh, oh, we just immediately go to... There's no waiting time? What the heck? Alright, then. I'm glad I sent the horses here, but... Okay, that... I thought there'd be waiting time. Also, so we're currently doing the Brest Litovsk Fortress, a fortress in Eastern Poland's vital to defend off the attack from Prussian rebels. If we have to, I guess we can reinstate the uh, Congress Kingdom, so we have lost a lot of less rebellions. But my goodness, I hope, I hope, I hope that's the right decision to take. Cause I'm not going to redo this at all. Oh, it's not going to be very good. Uh, so we're done with all this stuff here. So we're done with biochemistry, electronics, and instruments. So I guess we can grab geyser tubes. And I'm not done land doctrine at all, so let's do this one just a little bit first. 116 days, not bad. Victorian army. That'd probably be good to get a little bit more organization. Shouldn't. It? Where, where are you going? What the heck? Go there. Go there. Go, 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 go. Okay, we got Bukhara. Very nice. We already have Dushanbi, which is nice as well. And thank you for playing. Give me everything you're worth. Give me every little thing you're worth. Alright, not bad. I guess. Probably eventually we'll have something to do with these guys over here as well, I suppose. Dynamite's nice, even though we should have had that before we went to war, but whatever. Let's grab some of that, whatever that is. And underwhelming political stability. Oh, lavender political stability, huh? Are we suffering any sort of attrition? Hopefully not. And we probably don't have any more upgrades. No, that kind of sucks. No attrition yet. Plenty of political power. And the, obviously, the Confederates lost. But it's alright. That's weird. That's a weird... Is that how it was in real life? Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee? That looks really ugly. The Carolinas together makes sense. Virginia is together, which makes some sense, even though West Virginia historically did not join the Confederacy. But, um... Also, I got rid of child labor. I, it, it's now illegal in the, in the Russian Empire. Okay, okay, whatever. Uh, but we'll probably go with allow non-noble officers, because why not? Many nobles are incompetent cowards, while many peasants have, are brave patriots willing to die for Russia. That's ridiculous. They can't become officers. Nice. Followed up with efficiency growth. Might as well. Uh, that makes sense. This actually makes a lot more sense here too um, for these guys. Oh no, it, yeah, Louisiana. I guess it makes sense. I guess it does make sense overall. These three there. Political stability falls. Oh, that's not good. Oh, we can invest more here, but we're pretty much done. We just need this one. Proposal of the 1873 agreement. Send support to them. Other than that, really not much here. Even though, ooh, we can do some fort construction stuff as well. But we'll see as we push onwards. Alright, so we're a little bit ahead. It's still 1866. It's about May now. And finally we can go down a little bit more on our tree here. Even though uh, even though I'd love more army XP, gain division speed, mobilization speed, research speed. I'd love more research speed. Uh, armor attack. I'm not sure if we're going to release a lot of armor. Dockyard stuff. That's really just not worth it for us. Output's not bad. We could release more output. Division recovery rate, reinforce rates. That's, that's not bad either. A traditional army. Recovery rate, special forces. We don't have a lot of special forces either. Preparation time. Defense, training time, the group of population factor. Over here, artillery. Well, now we don't have any artillery at, right now. You know, I would like better supply consumption. Um, it's not bad. Production cost for artillery goes down. I think I'll go with traditional army. Traditional army, but we have an attempt on the Emperor's life. Unbeknownst to Alexander II and his entourage, a young revolutionary slipped through the crowd that had gathered around him at the age of at the gate of St. Petersburg Summer Garden. In a desperate attempt, the revolutionary pulled out a double barrel shotgun and trained his his arm or his aim at the Emperor and fire. Oh my goodness, a double barrel shotgun. Alexander jolted about when he heard the discharge of the weapon. He was still alive, luckily, just at the right moment. The revolutionary's attempt was thwarted by the valiant interruption of no other than a peasant born hatcher's apprentice by the name of Osip Komisarov, who jostled the revolutionary's arm just as he was about to fire. The assailant 
Uh, shocked by a commissar op, attempted to flee the scene, but he was immediately intercepted by the royal guard. The guards wrest his weapon away from him and confiscated what would appear to be morph morphine and strychnine to kill himself with, along with prussic acid to his disfigured face. Alexander approached his assailant and angrily asked him, What do you want? The shocked assailant only mumbled back to him, Nothing, nothing, before being taken away. The identity of the assailant had been revealed to be Dmitry Karakazov, a former student and member of the Revolutionary Students Organization known to be known as the Ishutin Society, led by Nikolai Ishutin. He had been locked away in the Peter and Paul Fortress awaiting his punishment, but he begs for forgiveness, even even offers to convert to orthodoxy. Punish him and his fellow revolutionary fellow revolutionaries harshly. Why is he, why, what are they doing? We're doing so many liberal reforms. We got rid of child labor. We got you excellent health care when we had none. We gave you the eight hour workday. We have literally freedom of the uh, you know freedom of speech, freedom of press or whatever it is. Um, yeah, sure we still we have full equality as well. I mean, what do these people want? Wait, why do we have under this other... Uh, what? 10% more political... I'm not sure what I, what I do with that. Okay, let's do that anyways. Allow non-noble officers. We, we can focus on defense or focus on offense. We will defend our motherland from the lost man, fighting tooth and nail, not a step back. Focus on offense. Why defend our homeland when we can take the fight to the enemy's lands? Um, I kind of like both. Really, defense might not be too bad. I kind of like prefer attack. But I guess we we'll go with defense. We'll defend our motherland the lost man, fighting tooth and nail, not one step back. Um, I like that. Board control. That's sure monthly population stuff, but consumer goods are good. High taxes. Oh, boy. Low taxes? Oh, very low taxes. Oh, that hurts us a little bit. We get more weekly stability, which is actually kind of nice, but even though we don't really need that. State religion. We're think, I think we're working on that already. Restricted attendance for freedom assembly. I suppose we can, be, we can get non-socialists allowed. I guess that would be okay. Maybe it's another reform for us. That might not be, might not be too bad. And let's do it together. Freedom of assembly. Free assembly. We don't believe in free assembly, so there you go. What is that? We're our autocratic peoples here. No unique mechanic. Oh, that sucks. That's big sadness. Big sadness. Alright, not bad. And other than that, not much, not much else really happened here. I'm glad we got all that stuff done, too. That's kind of nice. Horses are looking pretty okay. Not great. I did delete one of the divisions earlier. I don't know. When does the thing happen between us and China so we can take this area over? We still have 15 and 3. War with the German Confederation. Oh, major conflict. Oh, cool. Oh, I want to watch what happens. Can I send Prussia a thing here? An attaché? So we get maybe some more army XP because we can help them out too. And watch. I want to watch what happens. Now this is going to be incredibly bloody. Wow. Wow. British War. The Schleswiger Leichensteiner War. 21,000. Uh, that's the Gross Deutscher Bund. Versus 4,000. Wow. 33. They are... Germans just love killing each other. Wow. Cool. So we got that one done. That's a little bit ahead of time. A lot of these are actually ahead of time. Oh, we probably need to grab a Willish electrical generator. Not bad. Well, the Prussians are doing pretty darn well, I'd have to say. Until Hanover decides, yeah, to screw things up. Um, Austrians, not looking great. But, you know, they could still probably do okay. Prussians are probably pretty difficult to beat. Which we might have to involve ourselves in eventually. We have enough of the great game influence. The Brits have 10. Other than that, not really much else is happening. Oh, we lost all that army XP earlier. But it is what it is. We can build this stuff up, but there's no point. I would like to do minor Greek influence so we get some more consumer goods factories, but maybe that's just me. Do we have enough cotton? Yes, we do. Oh, we got that stuff done too. Very nice. Uh, reconnaissance. Let's grab some more efficiency growth. It's only 2%, but we got to get stuff done anyway, so. It looks like the Prussians are probably going to win. Probably. And they're, oh, they're taking out Hanover. Once these guys are done, they can go back and smash it up. Austrians, which the Italians are helping out as well. So that's always good to remember what the Italians are doing. Not bad. And we have a detrimental compact impact? Not too bad. And we still have a Tsarist vodka monopoly, so. That's where our construction speed, but gives more legislative power. Oh, there they go. They signed a white piece. There you go. Very nice. Good job, guys. Very quick war. Very, very, very quick war. As we're trying to desperately just push, 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 push in this campaign, because my goodness, this mod, I mean. Honestly, maybe for some things, at the point, rebellion looks a little better, but if there's any other way, just like eliminate countries, let's just like have them be like blank spots on the map. That might help out, maybe. I don't know, but like what we did with Africa. I don't know. I know it's an incredibly ambitious mod. Focus on defense, and we'll do model European army. Finally, with all the military reforms finished, the Russian Imperial Army is a force to be reckoned with. Soon, all the European realms will fear us like they did during the times of Peter the Great. And we remove. Lost the Crimean. Oh, we don't have that many national spirits left. Look at that. So we get more organization, more recovery rate, which would be good. Which is very good. Non-socialists are allowed. 
And what is this one? Non-political trade unions, free trade unions, state-controlled trade unions, prohibited, or general committee, high judge courtrooms. I like the kangaroo courts. <laughs> I get more uh, legislative power. Quasi-jury court. I guess we can get a jury court. Why not? Let's go for that one. Let's get a jury court together. Up after we get traditional army. And go with... Napoleonic war tactics is probably a really bad idea. Dissolution of the German Confederation, but whatever. Hopefully we'll still do okay. We, we need throw, throw some uh, howitzers on our things anyways, our divisions. Court. Jury courtroom. There you go. Now everyone should be a little better when they have to go to the court. Uh, let's see. Any, there's really nothing else here to do. Yeah. Uh, go and spend because we can. Why not? We've already done really great here. I want to Afghanistan. Can I go to a war with Afghanistan? That'd be kind of fun. Since we already have one here... Oh, boy, look at that. The Prussians are gone. Hopefully that... The, but we have the North German Confederation here. Hopefully when they annex these, you know, North Germans and the Central Germans and the Western Germans, they might speed up a little bit more. But it's only 1866. we got to wait to 1871 for them to fully unify as Germany. And that'll be pretty scary. That'll be pretty darn scary. I don't want to fight those guys. That's a lot of Germans to beat up. We have not done that much better on equipment, though. This is so bad. I mean, that makes sense for the cavalry equipment just because um, and we lost a lot of guys. We lost a lot of equipment fighting in the you know, Central Asian region. Which I'm glad I actually used infantry equipment but or cavalry equipment for that, but... <sighs> industrializing is Russia. So bad, man. So bad. And I've completely ignored the rest of the industrialization tree here. French Expedition Korea. East Shivers. Oh, my piece. Cool. Yeah. You have 800 days. That might not be bad. Immigration to Alaska. But this is all just, like I said before, infrastructure. Which is really sucky. So, I mean, maybe we'll do these, but there's so many more things we do. We're probably going to do this naval stuff last. We still need to do this one. We need to do the question of reunification, or rustification, I should really say. And we still have all this stuff to do as well. About politique, European diplomacy, anti Prussian sentiment, Lutheran American telegraph line, Elegant Three Emperors, support separatism in the Balkans, support orthodoxy in the Holy Land. Might not be bad, actually. Uh, French investments. I think real politic. Yeah, I think this is well. Politic is probably the one that was probably more historical. Avoiding coalitions, huh? Stop avoiding coalitions. Decision. The Kaliningrad machine plant is constructed. Your Highness, the machine plant you ordered the construction of has just been completed in Kaliningrad. Housing state of the housing state of the art machinery and highly trained workers and engineers. This factory promises to be an example of our great imperial industrial might. Let's begin production for artillery equipment. Very nice. I really don't want to lose Poland for factories yet, so we're going to wait to liberate Poland still. And, uh, hmm, new infantry equipment? Modern infantry equipment is obviously important for the modern army, therefore we must develop them, which is a good, good, good thing to do. And the commanders died, but oh well, who cares? Alright, so Alexander III marries Maria Fyodorovna. Our Tsarevich Alexander, while on a visit to Copenhagen, asked Princess Dagmar of Denmark for her hand. Since then, their relationship has only strengthened, and on the 1st of September 1866, Dagmar arrived in Kronstadt and was escorted to St. Petersburg. On the 29th, she made her formal entry into the Russian capital dress in a Russian national costume and traveled with the Empress to the Winter Palace, where she introduced was introduced to the Russian public on a balcony. Today, she converted it to orthodoxy, and a lavish wedding took place in the Imperial Chapel of the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg. Great, great, great. And we just finished... Develop new infantry weapons. Yeah, which is good. Um, I'm just, I'm really resisting this one. Reinstate the Congress Kingdom. Not bad, but uh, I guess we do this one. The Kingdom of Poland reestablished with Alexander II of Russia becoming car King Alexander II of Poland. I guess if we finally have to, I don't want to lose factories, but it'll be what it'll be. And then we'll probably go ahead and start doing, uh, expand the Russian railway network. The Moscow Petersburg Railway is incredibly important. We must upgrade the railway rail line itself and build other small railways to smaller cities such as Helsingfors, Reval, Kiev, and such. But I think I'll end it here today just because I've been playing this for probably about two hours, if not a little longer than that. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Oh look, the Germans have united a little bit more, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll have maybe a little bit more conflict on the continent. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.